this rolled across my feed, and this is the one movie where they can successfully get you to root for the FBI. This is probably the biggest piece of propaganda you're ever gonna see. It's called Mississippi Burning. We ain't too interested in your good old Mississippi boy stories, Anderson. You ain't from here no more. Why'd you leave anyway? I just wanted to change the scenery. You know, uh, the grits started leaving a bad taste in my mouth. Well, if that's how you feel about it, Mr. FBI, man, why don't you drink up that beer and get the hell on out of here and back to your commie loving bosses up north? <laughs> you must not know my boss, Mr. Hoover. Uh, he's not too fond of commies. He'd be on your side there. I don't give two shits whose side your Mr. Hoover's on, boy. All I know is we got 5,000 in this county who ain't registered a boat yet. And as far as I'm concerned, they never will. So you can tell your stiff suits up there in Washington, D.C. that they ain't gonna change us one bit. Unless it's over my dead body. Or a lot of dead <laughs> You'd kill Frank? Is that what you're saying? I wouldn't give it no more thought than wringing a cat's neck. And there ain't a court in Mississippi that convict me for it. How about you, deputy? How you with ringing necks, huh? Just keep pushing me over, boy. Get this straight, you corn old fucker. You tell your queer ass n bosses up north they ain't never gonna find them civil rightsers down here. So you might as well pack up your bags and head your ass on back up north where you belong. Boy, go! Uh -oh! Uh -oh! And you get this straight, shit kicker. Don't you go mistaking me for some whole other body. You got your brains in your dick if you think we're just gonna fade away. We're gonna be here till this thing's finished. How about you, deputy? Is it gun just for show? But you get to shoot people once in a while. <laughs> And what's really interesting about that is, A, is it dead on period accurate, but desegregation and civil rights was seen as communist. So, you know, when people are saying, oh, those Marxists are trying to teach us gender theory, they said the same, the exact, the peoples who are saying that the, you commies are trying to teach us gender theory or sexual the, uh, orientation theory, we're saying the same thing about racial theory. The exact same shit. And they reacted in the exact same way when civil rights was happening. It's identical. Communism isn't when embracing our differences. Well, not only that, in con I mean, the communists did nominate a, man, a black man to be VP in the 30s. Communist Party campaign... Communist Party USA campaign poster 1932. Equal rights... For Negroes everywhere. Self-determination for the black belt. Vote communist. The only, uh, they only have one joke and one set of talking points because they've never changed ever. I knew it! I knew it! How do you know so much about history, Mike? I've never heard any of this. <sighs> See, you learn about history, uh, of, and there's only one way to learn about history, and it's the hard way. Reading. Watching. Listening. Never accepting simplistic narratives and instead learning the truth about, about how things operate. And I think there is one heuristic that you can use that will work for you 95% of the time, and that heuristic is America bad. All right? <clears throat> when you stumble upon a situation, your first instinct should be America bad. And, and then you don't just knee-jerk think America bad, because it doesn't apply always. You need to figure out what's going on. You need to figure out what's going on. And the reason why I can say that is America is the global hegemon capitalist power. So in our history, America has always been one of the leading forces for colonialism, for capitalism, for exploitation, for oppression. All right? It's, it's the world capitalist superpower. So obviously it's not running around and doing liberation, all right? And as an American, it can be difficult to hear that and understand it 
And it's not to say that everything America has always done ever has always been bad in all circumstances everywhere. That's not true. And that'll make you very stupid if you think that. The one book that I read that was really very influential for me, and it's a classic, and it's not that long a read, is Howard Zinn's People, His, People's History of the United States. If you want uh, to learn a lot of shit that you've never really heard before, and perspectives on events that you maybe never have heard from a left-wing perspective, this is a very good starter book for U.S. history. And you're never going to go wrong, you know, uh, reading it. It's a, it's a good one. It's a, it's a classic. It's a classic. I think they just updated it. Yeah, they updated it in 2009. Yeah, there you go. The book was runner-up in 1980 for the National Book Award. So this is not, this is a serious piece of, like, scholarship. You know, it is, it is not some Looney Tune shit. This is as sourced as it can be. So I would really recommend you read that. <clears throat> and it's cheap. You can find it everywhere. As featured on The Sopranos? Oh, hold on. It's opinion, Anthony. What? That is just one person's opinion, Anthony. What, football again? He's not going to get hurt. He's a tough kid. Ouch. Oh, Jesus. We're having a discussion about Christopher Columbus. They would make fine servants. With 50 men, we could subjugate them. Subjugate? And make them do whatever we want. That doesn't sound like a slave trader to you? George Washington had slaves, the father of our country. Well, what's your point? His history teacher, Mr. Cushman, is teaching your son that if Columbus was alive today, he would go on trial for crimes against humanity like Milosevic and, you know, Europe. Your teacher said that. It's not just my teacher, it's the truth. It's in my history book. So you finally read a book and it's bullshit. Tony. Look, you had to walk in Columbus's shoes to see what he went through. People thought the world was flat for crying out loud. Then he lands on an island with a bunch of naked savages on it. I mean, that took a lot of guts. You remember when we went to Florida, the heat and those bugs? Well, like it took guts to murder people and put them in chains. He was a victim of his time. Uh, who cares? It's what he did. He discovered America is what he did. He was a brave Italian explorer. And in this house, Christopher Columbus is a hero. End of story. A cry out loud. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff. I wanted to watch this. Merrick Garland announces charges against officers connected to Breonna Taylor's death. If you remember, chat, Breonna Taylor was the black uh, woman. She was a nurse who was gunned down in what amounted to a firing squad because supposedly some like ex-boyfriend of hers was being investigated for a crime and she was with her boy her current boyfriend in her own home and the cops came in and just started blasting in the middle of the night. From the West End. The federal charges announced today allege that members of the place-based investigations Beat unit next, the falsified box, the affidavit used to obtain the search warrant of Ms. Taylor's home, that this act violated federal civil rights laws, and Lady that Luck, those violations resulted in Ms. Taylor's death. Specifically, we allege that Ms. Taylor's Fourth Amendment rights were violated when defendants Joshua Jaynes, Kyle Meany, and Kelly Goodlett sought a warrant to search Ms. Taylor's home knowing that the officers lacked probable cause for the search. We allege that the defendants knew the affidavit in support of that warrant contained false and misleading information and that it omitted material information. Among other things, the affidavit falsely claimed that officers had verified that the target of the alleged drug trafficking operation had received packages at Ms. Taylor's address. In fact, defendants Jaynes and Goodlett knew that was not true. We further allege that defendants Jaynes and Meany knew the search warrant would be carried out by armed LMPD officers and that conducting that search could create a dangerous situation for anyone who happened to be in Ms. Taylor's home. As outlined in the charging documents, the officers who ultimately carried out the search at Ms. Taylor's department were not involved in the drafting of the warrant and were unaware of the false and misleading statements it contained. When those officers executed the search warrant, Ms. Taylor was at home with another person who was in lawful possession of a handgun. When officers broke down the door to Ms. Taylor's apartment, that person, believing that intruders were breaking in, immediately fired one shot, hitting the first, first officer at the door. Two officers immediately fired a total of 22 shots into the apartment. 
One of those shots hit Ms. Taylor in the chest and killed her. We allege that the defendants knew their actions in falsifying the affidavit could create a dangerous situation, and we allege these unlawful acts resulted in Ms. Taylor's death. The charges announced today also allege that the officers responsible for falsifying the affidavit that led to the search took steps to cover up their unlawful conduct after Ms. Taylor was killed. We allege that defendants Jaynes and Goodlett conspired to knowingly falsify an investigative document that was created after Ms. Taylor's death. We also allege that they conspired to mislead federal, state, and local authorities who were investigating the incident. For example, we allege that in May 2020, those two defendants met in a garage where they agreed to tell investigators a false story. This indictment separately alleges that defendant Meany lied to the FBI during its investigation of this matter. Another indictment filed today alleges that after Ms. Taylor was shot, another LMPD officer, defendant Brett Hankison, moved from the doorway to the side of her apartment and fired 10 more shots through a window and a sliding glass door, both of which were covered with blinds and curtains. Defendant Hankison has been charged with two civil rights offenses, alleging that he willfully used unconstitutionally excessive force while acting in his official capacity as an officer. Assistant Attorney General Kristen Clark will speak more about that aspect of the case. As in any case, the charges we announce today are allegations, and all defendants are presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. Before I close, I want to thank Assistant Attorney General Clark, her team in the Civil Rights Division, and the case agents at the FBI for their tireless work on this case. We share, but we cannot fully imagine, the grief felt by Brianna Taylor's loved ones and all of those affected by the events of March 13th, 2020. Brianna Taylor should be alive today. The Justice Department is committed to defending and protecting the civil rights of every person in this country. That was this department's founding purpose, and it remains our urgent mission. Attorney General Clark. Assistant Attorney General. Yes. Since the founding of our nation, the Bill of Rights to the United States Constitution has guaranteed that all people have a right to be secure in their homes, free from false warrants, unreasonable searches, and the use of unjustifiable and excessive force by the police. Breonna Taylor should have awakened in her home as usual on the morning of March 13th, 2020. Tragically, she did not. She was just 26 years old. As Attorney back, General Chuck. Garland just stated, today's indictments allege that Louisville Police Detective Joshua Jaynes and Sergeant Kyle Meany drafted and approved what they knew was a false affidavit to support a search warrant for Ms. Taylor's home. That false affidavit set in motion events that led to Ms. Taylor's death when other LMPD officers executed that warrant. The Fourth Amendment of the Constitution ensures that people are subject to searches only when there is probable cause supporting a search warrant. Falsified warrants create unnecessary hazards for the public and for the police who rely on facts that fellow officers report in carrying out their public duties. The indictment alleges that by preparing a false affidavit to secure a search warrant for Breonna Taylor's homes, defendants Jaynes and Meany willfully deprived Breonna Taylor of her constitutional right to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures. And we allege that Ms. Taylor's death resulted from that violation. In a separate indictment, the grand jury charges former LMPD detective Brett Hankison with using unconstitutionally excessive force during the raid on Ms. Taylor's home. Without a lawful objective justifying the use of deadly force, defendant Hankison traveled away from Ms. Taylor's doorway to the side of the building and fired 10 shots into Breonna Taylor's apartment through a bedroom window and a sliding glass door that were both covered 
with blinds and curtains. Community safety dictates that police officers use their weapons only when necessary to defend their own lives or the lives of others, and even then, that they must do so with great care and caution. Today's indictment alleges that Hankinson's use of excessive force violated the rights of Breonna Taylor and her guest, and also of her neighbors whose lives were endangered by bullets that penetrated into their apartment. Attorney General Garland often underscores that at the Justice Department, we are to follow the facts and the law. And today, after a full and comprehensive investigation, the facts and law have brought us here to these indictments. I want to commend our team who spent hundreds of hours gathering facts regarding this tragedy. No stone was left unturned. These indictments reflect the department's commitment to preserving the integrity of the criminal justice system and to protecting the constitutional rights of every American. Independent from these criminal charges, a separate team <clears throat> from the Justice Department's Civil Rights Division is conducting a civil investigation into whether the Louisville Metro Police Department is engaging in a pattern or practice of law enforcement misconduct. We're looking at whether the LMPD uses excessive force, improper searches, or racially discriminatory policing. That ongoing investigation is separate from today's charges. In closing, I extend condolences to Breonna Taylor's family and loved ones. Today, we acknowledge the loss of her life. We recognize her dignity and recommit ourselves to the pursuit of justice. One thing to keep in mind, Chad, is that the Attorney General of Kentucky determined that there were only one of the uh, police officers deserved to have any kind of criminal charge. And it was the one officer who went off on his own and started blasting through the closed sliding glass window into everybody's apartments that were around. Uh, so there is a belief that the Kentucky state level law enforcement have engaged in a massive cover up uh, regarding this case. So to have the federal government come in with its own charges to those officers and investigate the Louisville Police Department. Hopefully it'll be further indictments. We'll see, but we will see. The kick-ass organizer on the ground for the Breonna Taylor protest was none other than Miss Linda Sarsour. Oh, Linda Sarsour, Luna. Linda Sarsour did it? Linda Sarsour did it? Wow, this is one of Bernie Sanders' uh, advisors. Linda Sarsour, chat. She's really cool. She's a very big uh, supporter of Bernie Sanders. Uh, uh... Any, honestly, anybody who doesn't like her is probably uh, a, um, a, uh, a piece of shit. And uh, uh, in fact, David Pakman made a video attacking her. Um, like, so, you know, what a surprise that, you know, Linda Sarsour has so uh, su uh, successfully organized on this issue. And David Pakman called her, basically has been attacking him. She also Brianna helps. Taylor. This for Brianna Taylor. And so, for folks that don't know, there's a building that is behind me. That building is where Commonwealth Attorney Tom Wine's office is. Tom Wine is the Commonwealth Attorney who should have prosecuted the cops that murdered Brianna Taylor. But instead, he recused himself because he was busy trying to charge Kenny Walker with attempted murder. But now, Kenny's charges got dropped. So now Tom Wine has no excuses. And we're here to tell him to do his job and prosecute the police officers that murdered Breonna Taylor. This for um, two questions. Really, just two. Um, I was wondering if you could just elaborate a little bit on sort of the top line things that you're finding in the pattern of practice investigation so far. And secondly, this question's for the AG. Um, with Brittany Griner's trial 
likely wrapping up shortly in Russia. Do you expect Ms. Greiner and Trevor Reed to be traded for Victor Bell? And do you support such an exchange? Do you expect other prisoner swaps? Three questions. You know I was counting. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll take the second question. Like All I can say is, as uh, Secretary of State has said, that Ms. Greiner uh, was unlawfully uh, detained. Uh, and beyond that, I really can't comment. I'm going to let um, Assistant Attorney General Clark answer the question about the pattern or practice investigation. Our investigation, in our pattern or practice investigation into the police department is ongoing. Our team has been on the ground conducting interviews with stakeholders, members of the police department, engaging in ride-alongs, uh, reviewing documents and data. Uh, we will share more once that investigation has concluded. Dave. Yes, thank you. Um, the, none of the, uh, the only officer in Louisville who has faced charges locally was acquitted, and that's Brett Hankinson. Did the uh, Justice Department feel compelled uh, to step in, in part because they you believe justice was not served on the local level? And do you believe the fact that uh, prosecutors did not charge any of the officers except Hankinson, and he uh, was cleared of those charges, will make your case more difficult? Um, the Justice Department brings charges, uh, including charges where uh, they've been brought before, when we believe uh, substantial federal interests have not been vindicated and need to be vindicated. This case charges uh, violations of federal offenses. Obviously, the state did not, and that explains our de determination in this case. Do you think it would make it more difficult, though, that this, the, the, this uh, Hank Essen was acquitted and the other folks were not charged? I, I have every uh, degree of confidence in our prosecutors and, investiga and investigators in this case. Catherine here, CBS News. Attorney General, was there a piece of evidence or a witness that really drove the department's decision to fast track the Breonna Taylor case? Well, this investigation has been uh, going on um, uh, urgently. It's run by career prosecutors and investigators. Uh, it's a complex case, uh, as you can even tell by the uh, three charging documents we filed today. And uh, today is the day when we were ready to bring those charges. Could a news of day question? Um, the grand jury here in Washington has issued subpoenas for top members of the Trump administration. Is there a window to bring charges in that investigation before the midterms? This is something I can't comment about. I'm sorry. Mr. Attorney General, uh, does, the, does Donald Trump, as a former president, have any ability to block testimony of, witness, excuse me, of witnesses who are testifying in a criminal grand jury investigation by asserting executive privilege? No. I'm afraid I'm going to give you the same answer I just gave, which is I'm, I'm not uh, able to comment about that. Thank you. Does any you. former president? Okay. All right, thank you. Well, there you go, chat. There you go. What it's damning is that she got convicted over weed. One position less, possession less than a gram of weed. Less than one fucking gram. Less than a pack of gum, and she got nine years. Here's the attack on the Capitol. Should result in double digit sentences. It said the highest was five years. I believe the person who got the most. Longest sentence so far in the Capitol rioters is a black man, actually. Uh, yeah. Are you watching the stream unsubbed? You're making income inequality worse. You are doing anti-praxis. We are the only Twitch stream that will not accept scam advertisers, and I will never fuck you over by selling you crap.